face-to-face -face conversation. So blessings, everyone. And welcome to the St. Peter's View <laughs> with Deacon Denise and Christine. Um, and uh, let's see, we, and, and our special guest. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to crash the party. I was just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no Should I do it again here? Let, let me let me cut out and then we can reintroduce. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, yeah, yeah. Go go back down. Go back down. All unsee right. it. Unsee it. Okay. And our special guest for today is Boom, the ah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> no. Michael Lashman. Hey, hey. Good to here. yeah. Thanks for me. Hey. All right, all right. I know. You know, I was um because uh, we got flagged for uh for playing. Like you know, there's usually like incoming music, so some yeah. song that we play um in relationship to you. But then we actually got shut down from you uh, YouTube. They actually took our video down because we played Respect when we were interviewing Christopher and Brian the other week. Wow. So wow. Mitch had to go in and like lower had to had to mute that part, wow. <laughs> had to mute that part. So, anyways, but I was trying to think of what would have been a good song for you. I was trying to think of something in relationship to your ordination. Yeah, you know, in my mind, it's Kanye West, Jesus walks. That's <laughs> like whenever I go into a room, that's what's playing in the back of my head. I don't know why. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. That is the soundtrack of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Gold Digger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I kind of love. Even I don't like the message yeah. of that song. I know, I know, but it's got a really good. I love the yeah. syncopation. And yeah. saying he's a gold digger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more, Christine. No more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going to ask you our um, ten questions. Okay. Which um, I had next to me and it seemed to have fallen. Okay. So. Is this like the general ordination exams? Like I have to plan a service and like do something <laughs> right. by him. And That's right. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I'm having PTSD, Christine. Oh, <laughs> I know I've not lost them. Hold on. Give me, give me one second. Okay. Give me one second. <laughs> talk, just talk amongst yourselves. It's right. Deacon time. <laughs> Deacon Michael and Deacon so, Denise. So what's new? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's been we've been on like an incredible journey because we left New York in uh, at the end of May uh, once the seminary instruction was done and the kids we knew were going to be online. So we headed west to where my mom lives um, north of Seattle, on a, a kind of isolated island in Puget Sound. And we've been hunkered down there since um, since June. And so now we're driving back east uh, and hope to be in New York on Wednesday. Um, where we will quarantine in our apartment for two weeks. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We know where to find you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're glad to have you back. Yeah. It's going to be good to be there. Yeah. I mean, those pictures of the Northwest looked amazing. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Okay. I found them. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm coffeeed up and I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. So, um, who is your dream dinner party guest and why? Wow, my dream dinner party guest. Well, yeah. it actually, um, my dream became a reality because uh, it was Rowan Williams. <laughs> and uh, and uh, two years ago when he was over to do the paddock lectures at the seminary, uh, Julia cooked up some uh, vegetarian lasagna and we had the Archbishop of Canterbury over to our apartment for dinner with some of our friends. And um, it was, it was surreal uh, to have this like theological icon, uh, you know, eating across from me. And honest to goodness, we were talking about Game of Thrones for a good portion of the dinner. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, it was great. I loved it. Funny. Wow. Was there anything about him that was kind of surprised you? Well, it's just how approachable he is. And like, um, you know, his writing can be really, really complex, but in sort of spoken informal context, he's incredibly warm and hospitable and um, just a, a genuinely great guy uh, and a vegetarian, which I found kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, That's yeah. what people say about me too. They're like really intimidated by me. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then you're, they're like, she's really scary in person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next question is, um, what's the last TV show that you binge watched? Oh, oh this is embarrassing. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I have watched a lot of Netflix <laughs> in, the, in the last couple of months. Um, 
probably the Umbrella Academy season two on Netflix, which is I really I really love kind of um, superhero, uh, especially superhero misfit kinds of shows uh, like the Umbrella Academy or um, you know, uh, there's a couple, a couple of them. Uh, the the Doom Patrol on HBO. Um, they're just kind of they're kind of weird and quirky approaches to the superhero genre and kind of subvert it in some ways, um, where it's like people who get superpowers and like struggle to to like you know to use them and have to like learn them and stuff. So yeah, I think it was uh, probably Umbrella Academy season two that I binged last. Yeah, does is there a part of you that sort of like resonates with that? story Millie. well you know i don't like to talk about my superpower but i can uh, move things with my mind uh usually wow. it requires asking someone to bring them to me but you know it's still partly the mind is involved in that so no i think you know um like any gift takes a lot of work and i think you know when i was um when I was a kid, I thought, you know, things like spiritual gifts would just be sort of like, you know, you'd naturally be able to do whatever. But it turns out that uh, any gift takes a lot of practice for it to become uh, more than just an amateurish kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Good. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that, um, and Catherine has commented that that was her answer last week. I, I thought oh. I had heard it just recently. Really? Wow. Academy. That's yeah. cool. I was just thinking someone else said that it was, it was Catherine just last week. So. I have to watch it. I, I've seen it like being advertised all over the place. But I, I didn't even know what it was about. So yeah, yeah. it's about umbrellas. It's about how to. <laughs> umbrellas. I, I love umbrellas. So yeah, that sounds good. All right, cool. So um, what book is on your nightstand right now? Mm, uh, it's um, uh, it's called the the Lemon Tree, uh, and uh, 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 by I think Sandy Tolan is the author's name, and it's a. Uh, it's kind of a, a journalistic um, approach to um, understanding the, the Palestinian and Israeli conflict. And um, it looks at through the lens of one, one home in, uh, in Palestine. And so it talks about the life of um, Jewish um, refugees from Europe coming into Palestine in the 40s. And then also the life of the Palestinians who, who lived there as families for hundreds of years. And it teases out the complexity of the situation in a way that's really faithful to both sides. Mm. While kind of describing, um, you know, but but not in a way that doesn't try to like smooth it over because it's it's such a complex and and difficult situation with the you know the occupation of Palestinian homes and also the need for for refugees from Europe to have a safe place to go. Um, so I found it to be a really good read. Yeah, that's excellent. I read that several years ago, and it, I agree with you. It's 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 like true too, which I when I bought it, I thought, oh, this is going to be a novel and it'll be interesting. But it's actually like deeply researched, and the author goes to great lengths to say, hey, this is you know nothing that I say is going to be just conjecture. It's actually going to be what what I heard in reporting on this. Yeah, that's great. All right, the lemon tree. Check it mm -hmm. out. Yeah. All right. So, what is always in your bag? <laughs> what is always in my bag? Um, uh, so, uh, this is going to sound really pious and I don't mean it to be, but it just is like the first thing that came to mind, but I Good have, <laughs> no, well, I should, uh, I have a, a pencil case in my bag with like pens and pencils and erasers and stuff, but I also have in it, um, some Anglican prayer beads that Julia made for me years and years ago. And, um, I, I find that when I get anxious to have something like that to, you know, to hold in my hands while I'm praying is really, um, really helpful to sort of center me and um, help me to kind of get back into a, a good space. So those are almost always with me. Yeah, I love that. We should have an Anglican prayer bead making. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Julia should lead Yeah, that. Julia, yeah, she'll, she'll get right on that. She's yeah. like. <laughs> All right. So, what is your favorite meal to eat? Um, well, my go-to favorite meal is pizza. I could eat pizza seven days a week and be completely content with it. Um, I like pizza of all kinds. I try not to admit this in public, but um, because I'm just with the two of you and we're close friends, um, I actually like Canadian bacon and pineapple pizza. I do too. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> that was, a, I was I was really getting real there. But uh, I would say though that uh, my favorite meal uh, is uh, <laughs> Mitch on the chat just gasped. Uh, <laughs> my connection might be broken here in a second. Um, so when um, when Julia and I uh, no when Julia turned um, thirty, we were living in Scotland at the time, and uh, she'd been reading this book called En Route to Tan, which is about an American woman who moves to France and sets up a cooking school. And so for her 30th birthday, she went to the cooking school for uh, almost two weeks and learned a bunch of regional French recipes. And one of them was this uh, fish dish that's kind of like a bouillabaisse, but it's called a buried. And uh, it's super complex and it takes like hours and hours of cooking. And she makes it for me once every three years on my birthday. And so it's kind of like the Olympics in terms of its like cycle <laughs> in my life, but it is my absolute favorite meal. And I like think about it between the years. And I think uh, it's probably what's kept us married for so long. <laughs> well, I think um, Julia needs to uh, maybe cook this for the St. Peter's community. Yeah, I think Anybody so. with me? Anybody with me? <laughs> yeah. If you would like for Julia to make this amazing sounding dish, let yeah, us know in the live chat. <laughs> She's going to be very busy. Yeah, yeah she is. She's going to be making furby. She's going to be cooking sea bass. It's going to be a yeah. yeah. But Christopher said that he loves pepperoni and pineapple. Oh, that's actually really good, too. I've had that. That's, yeah. that's I feel like the salty and the sweet. It's like, yeah. Yeah. do you have a favorite pizza place in New York? Well, um, you know, our local is Gotham and I really it's it's just, you know, there on ninth. And um, I like it because they have like thick semolina or like a cornmeal on the crust so it's like got a little bit of extra crunch to it mm, yeah and that's the pizza that i always buy when i when i've gone to the food pantry um a couple times over the summer i always get that pizza for yeah. our it's delicious it, it is it is yeah and local yeah um jahid is saying um that if uh if julia cooks that it uh, might make um matt come to church <laughs> come on julia <laughs> I know. Hey, it worked for Jesus. Like his, yeah. whole, his whole deal was like eating with yeah. people. So, yeah. And Christopher is saying that if you're in Minneapolis, you should go to Zen Box Izakaya, the most. Oh, wow. Hey, okay. man, I hope I have time to do that today. <laughs> you better get going. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next Don't question. Don't eat anything weird the day before ordination. I'm just saying, I don't want to. <laughs> right. Say, That's right. Nothing don't throw up on the bishop. Please. Nothing you don't usually have, you know. <laughs> Good to know. It's like getting ready for surgery, right? Not for nothing, yeah. <laughs> Just black coffee. Um, all right, so what's your favorite movie that you would never pass up if it was on? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, I don't tend to rewatch movies. Um, I don't know why. I've just never been that into it and even like if I'm I'm flipping through channels I and I see a movie that I've watched before I probably won't um, watch it again but I think one of my my favorite movies that I have watched a couple times is uh, Children of Men uh, based on the P.D. James book and the movie came out you know probably like 10 or 15 years ago now um, but uh, I just I thought the acting was really good uh, the cinematography was really interesting, and the idea of a kind of post-apocalyptic world has been something that I've I've written about a little bit in my academic work, and so I'm kind of interested in, in like what it's like when civilizations deteriorate, mm. which has nothing to do with now, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Michael. <laughs> We're not having church in our living rooms. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um, all right. Let me see. I'm like flipping between screens here. Okay, um, is there a concert that you'll never forget? Mm, a concert that I never forget. Um, I saw uh, U2 in Glasgow, uh, Scotland at uh, the Rangers Stadium, uh, which is one of the, the football clubs, uh, pr probably in 2004, 2005. And, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a PhD student at the time, so we were really poor and our, our seats, I think, must have been at like 10,000 feet elevation because Bono was like the size of an ant. Uh, but it was still incredible. I'd always wanted to see you too. Um, and it was just like, it was, it was probably one of the biggest concerts that I had ever been to at that point. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Me too. All right. What's a snapshot of an ordinary moment that brings you joy? I think, um, you know, during the pandemic, it's been um, playing games with the family. Um, you know, we, um, 
early on when we were in our apartment, we were playing a lot of Settlers of Catan <laughs> as a family and uh, and other board games. And uh, just that, that kind of time joking and hanging out with each other and just the kind of ordinariness of being together as a family unit has been really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to play more games. Yeah. In life. Denise, do you have a favorite game? Um, no, I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Yeah. yeah. I can't say. Yeah. How about, how about you, Christine? Do you have a game that you like to play? You know, I, uh, Jimmy and I play Scrabble. We've actually had a, um, probably like a 20, well, we haven't played in a, in a while, but we, we probably had like a good, like 10 year Scrabble competition. Speed wow. Scrabble, actually. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Speed Scrabble, which is very fun. Yeah. And um, so we get really competitive. I'm only competitive with him. Nobody, nobody else. <laughs> I, I love the idea of Scrabble, but I'm, I'm a terrible speller. And, um, you know, I'd be like, you know, I'd be putting out fake words all the time. <laughs> and who would know? And since you're an academic, you're just. I know. I'm like, hey, I got a Ph.D. I get to make the words. <laughs> that's that's what they tell you when you get the Ph.D. Exactly. All right. This is the last question. Okay. Um, what are you deeply grateful for right now? Mm. I am uh, deeply grateful for uh, my uh, my family and in particular, uh, Julia, who has um, stood by me on this uh, crazy journey to ordination um, for a very long time. Uh, Julia and I uh, have been together for, I think, 20, 29 years. Uh, we met when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we have been together ever since uh, as friends and as uh, a married couple. And, um, and so she, uh, she's been through it all. And I'm tremendously grateful for her encouragement and her patience and her support through all these years. Wow. Hey, Julia. Was that the right answer, honey? <laughs> She's like holding up cue cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She is. Totally. It's That's cool. a long time, Julia. That's a long time. That's a lot of Michael. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not kidding. You're not kidding. I'm not an easy guy to live with. <laughs> the woman is a saint. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, she's awesome. Because I don't think I knew that you guys had have known. It was have been together, like you were dating when we you were started there? dating. I think when I was like fifteen, which is really scary because my kids are sixteen and thirteen, and the thought of them meeting their life partner right now is terrifying <laughs> and disgusting in equal measure. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, well, that's lovely. That's amazing. Well, we're grateful for you and Thank for you. her. Yeah. Well, thanks, Michael, for being yeah. a special guest. Thank you. This was Absolutely. great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, we'll be thinking of we'll you live tomorrow, you. right? Thank you very <laughs> much. Yeah. Tomorrow at uh, 12 noon uh, Central Time. All right. Awesome. Great. All right. Blessings, everyone. Bye. All right. We'll see you all. We'll all right. see you all. Coffee hour if you choose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And coffee hour. Um, is that meeting ID somewhere? Oh, here we go. Yep. Yep, the meeting ID, 863-6023-1817. So we will maybe, hopefully, see you then. But if we don't, have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.